Charging for quotes. First up, who's who charges for quotes? All right, so 50% of the room, fantastic. Now, I know for those of you that don't, you may be going, yeah, well, yeah, that's great for them, but it's not possible for me. And um, I want to just open up that discussion a bit and talk about it because, look, it's hands down, quoting is hands down the biggest inefficiency in this industry, right? You spend a lot of time there um, and a lot of wasted time. Got a builder down in Melbourne who calculated the hours um, over the previous 12 months that he spent quoting on jobs that he never got. And he, and he probably was never in the running for either. 240 hours, which is around 30 working days. So a massive amount of a waste of time and obviously frustration as well associated with that. So if you can get to a point where you charging for quotes and then ideally outsourcing that to someone who is better than you at doing the takeoffs and the estimating, clients playing for the privilege, that's obviously the ideal situation. We've got some guys in the room that are already in that position and that'll allow you to just pick and choose the jobs, manage your workflow a lot better as well, put you in a position of control. So I want to just go through the, the basic process that um, most of the guys that I'm working with follow. And if you don't have a process, then you're going to be at the mercy of the process for the, the client who's choosing a builder because every single one of them has a process. You think about when you're buying something, anything, you're going to go do some research, whether it's a, a new washing machine, a TV, a fridge, a car. You know, someone's spending half a million bucks more, they're going to absolutely have a process. Now, only one person can be in control of the sales process or the buying process. Ideally, your process should help people make a better buying decision and buy from you. And it's either them following your process or it's you following their process. And I spoke to someone the other day, might even be in the room, uh, just recently he was saying that um, they, they charged for quotes, but for whatever reason they got a strong referral, they didn't charge, they did a free quote, they thought it was a negotiated tender, it wasn't, and the person came back, um, might have been Adrian, <laughs> yeah, just popped in my head, you don't mind me sharing and pointing to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, you, you, you learn from it, right? Yeah. So, do you mind giving us the, the abridged version? Yeah. Yeah, well, I've been charging for quotes for at least 12 months now. Um, and funnily enough, I thought this was a negotiated tender, and even with negotiated tenders, I've still charged. Right? It's just my time. Um, in this particular case, it was a referral, and I thought, oh, look, I'll buck the trend, I will do it for free. And as a result, the, the, the system uh, basically fell over and it was the first, um, first job that we lost uh, in, in the last six months. So. And they, they wanted, when you sent them the, the initial uh, breakdown, they wanted more specifics, didn't they? They wanted a full breakdown of cost for each and every trade and everything else. And I told them, look, that's not the way we work. Um, probably enough, they rang me last night, we got the job. <laughs> All right. I told them, that's not the way we work, go find yourself another builder, we're not doing it. But that's when you know that's their process. So they go, going, oh, we want to look out, and they're trying to shop things out and find a, you know, a cheaper plaster or whatever it is. So you've got to have a one, have a process. Yeah, follow it, stick to it. So that's, that's the other thing. That's, the, the guys that don't have a process, once they get it up and running, the, the hardest thing is consistently using it and, and compliance. Another really important component to charge for quotes is educating. People need to understand why it is that you're charging them. Um, as it relates to the benefit to them. You can't just rock up and say, if you don't charge, I'm going to charge you. We charge for quotes. Boom. And then expect people to go, yeah, sure, how much? How do I pay? You've got to, you've got to explain to them you know, the, the fact that, and um, you'll hear from a couple of guys kindly again, have, have volunteered to, to have a chat. I know uh, Daniel's one of them, where people that once they've been educated on the benefit of paying for a quote to them, they, they won't take a free quote from a builder because they know it's, it's probably not, it, maybe it is, but it's, yeah, the odds aren't great. It's, but it's probably not worth the paper it's written on. So why would you bother? Rather pay two if you have to and then go down that path. So the important thing as well is, is knowing when to say no. 
Um, having a good sales process allows you to turn on the taps with your marketing. That puts you in a position to deflect the work that's not relevant to your niche or where the clients aren't quite what you're looking for or the margin's not great. Good marketing, good sales process allows to, for you to optimize your profitability. That's the whole purpose of the exercise. Remember, the, the results that we're trying to achieve with everything we do is optimum profit, workflow, cash flow, and then sustaining it. So your marketing and sales does that, but a big part of it is saying no. It's been, and having a process for saying no, knowing how to say no. So those are the, the fundamentals, the essentials that you need to have in place in order to charge for quite successfully. What I want to do now is get some guys up, because I know you guys love hearing from other builders like yourself, tell their war story. So Brett, if you don't mind joining me, please, mate. Just give us a bit of background. What do you do? Yeah, what sort of, what sort of work do you do? Um, Firstly, uh, I'm not a public speaker, so <laughs> forgive me if I get a bit nervous, but um, um, what I do, okay, we're uh, residential builders, um, actually based in Maryborough, but it covers the Harvey Bay, Bundaberg, you know, Tegimpi sort of area, that type of thing. Um, mainly brick veneer, slab on ground type construction, um, that's, uh, but custom design construct is our, our niche and in that sort of 250, 300 square metre home. Um, Top area, yeah. And also, that you, you've gone through like we've known each other for a while now. Yeah. Brett, was you at the first boot camp? Boot yeah, camp. I was, and um, I, I'd been in the industry all my life. I started as a carpenter, I always wanted to become a builder. I, I built my business up over about 1990, I think I became a registered builder. So I started to build the business from there, doing renos and then to new houses. And um, I thought all I had to do was work hard to get to be successful, you know. So I worked hard. Day, night, weekends, all that sort of stuff. Got the business to a, a reasonable level. Um, wasn't overly happy with that. Wanted to grow bigger, wanted to expand. Um, so I started employing sales team and all that sort of stuff. I had staff, I had all the, all the things that I used to do all myself. And um, I guess over a period of time, we got into a pretty bad way. We, uh, uh, I was, yeah, had an out of my pants anyway, so to speak. I had no money left. I saw an email come across my desk, it was for a, a boot camp, a builder's boot camp in Sydney. I thought, I've always wanted uh, and strived for in the industry a mentor, someone to help. Um, I didn't have a great education, I dropped out of school in, in fourth form, you know, and, and went and worked as a carpenter. So on the business side of things, I had really very little knowledge and, and I thought I was going in the right direction, but I clearly wasn't. I was spending more than I was making, so <laughs> that doesn't always go too well. Um, so anyway, I, um, uh, I robbed the last of the credit cards and I jumped on a plane and I came to Sydney. I met Kurt and... Um, that was three years ago. Three now. years ago, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it changed my life. It changed my, my business, um, my personal life, everything. You know, we, we went from about a $3 million turnover with about a 10% margin, which wasn't going to last too much longer. Um, to now, we turned over $6 million this year and sitting on about a 25% margin, pushing into 30%. Uh, it's been a massive turnaround in a very short period of time. Um, and you know, one of the reasons I'm here today is um, to thank Kurt for all his help, but also to share whatever I've learned from that with the rest of the room. No, awesome, man. It's so good. I, I love the success stories. Obviously, a big buzz for me to see, Brett, you, know, you go through the transformation in your business and yeah. personal as well. But yeah. it's like the biggest one. There'll be a lot of things you've changed. Oh, yes. But the, huge the, amount. the sales process, the reason why you're talking about, yeah. to get drilled down specifically yeah. to how the sales process changed. So you had two salespeople, yep. and then you were spending money on TV advertising as well, right? Huge so amount. Tell us yep. about how that specifically changed. The, the big specific there, I guess, was looking at the figures. And, and from the first boot camp, we did a lot of that sort of stuff about, um, Kurt's already mentioned this morning, clearing the decks, and, and just actually looking at where our costs were. And, and working with Kurt after the boot camp, we looked at, at, we looked at that spending, and there was about $140,000 a year in the two salesmen and TV advertising. And uh, it wasn't returning the money that we were spending. So we cleared the decks. We got in there, I got rid of the sales guys. I went through the sales system that Kurt presented to us myself. I tried to get the sales guys to do it, they wouldn't listen to me, they wouldn't follow the system. So bugger this. And, and the thing that really nailed it to me was one of the guys lost 
a client after they'd signed and paid for a preliminary agreement. Now, that just really, really annoyed me. So I cleaned them out, got rid of them, said, go, get it. I'm doing this myself. <laughs> so I then took over the role in sales. Um, you know, from a salesperson, the, the, uh, the, the image I guess a lot of people have about a salesperson is not that great. So, but with following the system that we have and educating the clients, a lot of the stuff is done by uh, automated emails and things like that that gives them some education that they're actually asking questions of the builder. They're not seeing me as a salesperson, which is fantastic because I know a lot about building. You're a solution provider. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and, and look, it, it just changed. It just changed. All of a sudden, um, the charging for quotes through preliminary agreements... Had anyone said to me before I did the first build, builders camp, uh, <laughs> boot camp, yeah. um, that in three years' time I'd be standing here talking about charging for quotes and getting paid to do that sort of stuff, I just wouldn't have believed it. Now, I won't do it without it. We have a standard fee of three thousand dollars for a, a two hundred and fifty square metre home that might only cost two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars, but people are paying me ten percent up front just to get a bloody quote. Like, and if they don't want to do it, I say, well, there's the door. See you later. You know, it's, uh, it's, it, I can't believe how simple it is and, and how much more time I have now to do things. Uh, as I said earlier, like, I always thought it was hard work, and that's 80 hours a week working. Now, I'm 35 hours maybe a week. Um, I spend a lot more time doing my hobbies and things that I want to do. I get to take plenty of time off work. Um, and we've got clients banked. They want to come and see us. They're happy. The majority of our work these days is referral. I don't spend a cent on TV advertising or radio advertising, anything like that anymore. We use social media. It's, and that's all, you know, well, come from that. curtain. But, yeah, I mean, you had to implement it. You had to make those changes. So oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's your mindset that you had to change, which yeah. is a big thing. A lot yeah, of guys yeah. don't go there. They get back and see the information mm. or the process mm. for, that's working for other people, but they don't have, the, have it in them to change. So yeah. you've got to take a lot of credit there. So um, prior to you starting to charge for quotes and use prelims, you had your process was for your salespeople, for every call that came in, that when remember you telling me yeah, you yeah. went into a site visit, right? Every, every phone call, every anyone that phone, inquiry. site visit went out. So you just imagine the wasted time. Yep. But now you've got a process for saying no. So you've got you've said no to a few prospects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've done a lot of this now. It's been three years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's and it's interesting how much satisfaction you get out of saying no. It's um because <laughs> I mean I guess you know as builders we've all been there. We all get that client. And you go, geez, I wish I hadn't have had them. I wish I'd not taken those guys on. Well, nowadays I don't. You know, we, we run through a series of qualifications and all that sort of stuff through our process that um, decides who we want to do work for, you know. And uh, one, one fellow I had, um, he come in, he actually he had paid for a quote. I gave him a quote. We, we talked about things through the process. And uh, it, it was come basically contract day. You know, we come into my office and we're sitting down and we're talking about things. And uh, one of his questions to me was, how long is it going to take to build this house? And I said, well, look, it's a, it's a little bit different from the average, but you know, six months, from signing a contract to moving in, about six months. It's a pretty normal thing. Oh, well, I've got this bloody builder down the road. He told me he'd do it in three months. I said, OK, well, why don't you go to him? He said, well, no, I want, I want to build with you, but I want you to do it in three months' time. And I'll sign a contract now, if you sign it, to say you'll have the house built in three months' time. And I said, well... I can say that. I can say, yeah, OK, no worries at all. John, you know, oh, bloody, um, come here, sign a contract, and I'll tell you that I'm going to have it built in three months' time. But in three months' time, when it's only just getting a roof put on it, um, you're not going to be real happy, are you? And he turned around and he said to me, no. He said, I'll be living on site in a shed. And he said, I'll be the client from hell. I said, OK, take your plans, and there's the door. Just close it quietly on the way out, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was just shocked. He was shocked. How dare you say no to me? I said, well, you've, you've told me what you're going to be like already, mate, and I don't want to work for you. So th that, that's so, a great example. So he, that's you pushing up against his process, because he yeah. thinks, like a lot of people, because he's got the money, he's the prize, yep. so he's in control. But all of a sudden, he washed up against you going, yeah. no, that's not... And, that, that's, and not that's the, the trouble we face, I think, as builders. When we have our process, and now I've got a great process, but, and you have people that want to take control of your process, they're the people I don't want to work for. 
Yeah. Um, I, I had another one just recently as well, and it was a big home. It was a 600 square metre home. Uh, this guy came to me and um, he sent me through all the plans and all the details, all the specifications, everything he'd done himself, which is not my ideal way to go about it. But anyway, this guy had done that. He'd, he'd done some research on us and, and he wanted to work with us. So he sent all this stuff through and he, and he gave me a call and uh, we started talking. I asked a few qualifying questions, that sort of stuff, and I wasn't really liking what I was getting back. So I sort of procrastinated on for a while. I didn't call him back for a couple of weeks, and this just got him a bit cranky, you know. And uh, anyway, he's run me back, and he, I've given you a deadline of when I want this quote back in by, and you haven't done it yet. Now, what's going on? And uh, I pretty well told him then that I didn't want to do it. And uh, he, just, he kept persevering with me. I thought, oh, this guy's crazy, but he, I've told him back. no already, and he still wants to keep going. So I thought, all right, um, what I'm going to do with this fellow, and this is, the, this is the final qualification I'm going to give to you, is a fee proposal for the quotation to be done, because it was a really detailed thing. So I popped it in an email and I sent it over to him with a, with a fee of uh, about $2,000, I think, to do the quote for him. And I, <laughs> about three hours later, I got this super abusive email back telling me how unbloody professional I was charging for quotes. How the hell can you do that in the building industry? And uh, that's the end of our... Our, uh, our story there so <laughs> yeah, good uh, so yeah that was uh, you know a great way and and the and the, the prelim agreements all paying for charging for quotes is a qualification in itself I believe exactly. that determines these sort of people you know that that I mean he would have been a real hand well I've had people say when, when they trial it they get that response the guy goes oh, well, who the hell do you think you are charging for quotes and, yeah. and then the bill comes and says you see now it doesn't work and, I'm, and I'll say, no, that, that's it working. You yeah. just got rid of that guy. Absolutely. You don't want Absolutely. him because your yep. A-grade clients are going to be appreciative and yep. going to have the exact opposite yep. Yep. response. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What was the toughest thing for you, like uh, either headspace-wise or, I don't know, getting it implemented? What was, it, what was the most challenging part of going through the change? Oh, um, it, that's, a, that's a tough one, actually, to, to think what's been the hardest thing. I mean, I, I like to embrace as much as I possibly can to, to have a better business, a more profitable business, a business that I can, um, you know, pass on. Um, the headspace thing, I think, is probably technology for me. Mm. You know, the, um, uh, some of the systems I'd like to implement into the business to simplify it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's when, you were, <laughs> when it was tough, because when we met, things were tough, right? Yeah, You were, you were sweating yeah. bullets, and that, that's when you're yeah. in that, how you responded in that situation is mm. what defines you. It's like Bradbury when he... When he yeah. was uh, took off the injury, it's yeah. like you just lie down and go. I'm just going to, you know, go away, go oh, do something else. Look, but you obviously made a call to fight back. Yeah, and here yeah. you are now, and it's like it's. Yeah, and look, it right. could have been easy, I suppose, when you've got creditors knocking on your door and and stopping credit on you and all that sort of stuff. It'd be easy just to go, oh shit, this is all too hard. I want to get out of here, mm. you know. But yeah, I, I I I hadn't worked all my life to give up, yeah. you know, at that point in time. So, um, and I. I'd always wondered in this industry, there's no one to turn to. You know, you have your, your governing, like your HIA and your, your MBAs and that sort of stuff, you know. But I've never found them, uh, anyone in those organisations that, that will talk to a builder in builder's terms and help. Mm. You know, they always say, oh, we've got a legal team over here that'll do this for you if you get in strife. That's bullshit. Um, you know, uh, there's no one there as a mentor. You know, mm. and when I first saw this thing come across, you know, a, a builder's coach... Uh, it was just a lie went on in my brain to say, look, you know, spend the last of your, your dollars <laughs> on credit cards and get down there yeah. and check it out. And it has been a massive turnaround for us. Fantastic. Well, good on you for making the changes no and for getting up here, Brett. Thank Thanks, you so much. Thank um, I want to get uh, Daniel up as well. So Daniel's from Sydney and uh, also been charging... For quotes for a while, so I want to get a get another perspective. Thanks, mate. No worries. Get you get stand by the mic there. And um, yeah, tell us a bit about uh, what you guys do and a big backstory. Oh, guys. So my name is Daniel Simone from Simone Homes, and and pretty much. Well, the backstory was uh, I was a hairdresser first of all. Just quickly, I was following in my mum's footsteps for a, for a few months. I never anyways, knew that, man. just quickly. Yeah, I don't know what people do. <laughs> anyways, that was quickly over, and then went with my dad to work um, as a carpenter. Fast forward a, a lot of years, I uh, went from being a carpenter, said to my dad, we want more, building company, let's do it. All of a sudden, I'm a carpenter, next minute, I'm selling new homes, and I have no idea what I'm doing. So, that was uh, pretty scary, and I had no idea what I was doing, and yeah, so that's, that's the quick version of the story. 
So then we met at an HIA event. Yes, we did, yes. And then um, out the back end, like, of that, that training session, yep. you just decide, you made a decision, you're going to start charging for quotes. So tell us what, what, what was that experience like? How did you start doing it? The first, sort of I think the first thing was, after leaving that day, was I said to myself that I'm sick of learning shit and never doing anything about it. Yeah. So the first thing was like, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to actually action something. I'm going to actually do it. So I started doing it and... and I had it in my head going into client meetings, I'm going to charge these people for trying to card, and then I never did it. And then what the deciding factor was myself, I looked myself in the mirror, not literally, but I said to myself, you have to get out of your own way. You're the only one holding yourself back from saying, you've got to give me money. I was the one, I, it was me. Once I got over the fact that I believed in myself, I had the confidence to do it. So it was just a headspace thing. Total headspace. Yeah. Totally so what do, you, what do you guys do now? How do you, what, what's your process? So pretty much what, the what process was, well, just before that as well too, like a lot of the times I'd sit in client meetings and I would, uh, the dreaded question they would ask me was what's next? I would like, don't ask me what's next. I don't fucking know what's next. Like, I don't know. Don't you just tell me to start building? Like, I don't know. So once I knew that, obviously it depends on if they had plans or they didn't have plans. I'd have a different process, but I now know that I'd worked out what a process was. Whether or not it was the right or wrong process, it was right. I had some sort of process. So, you know, whether they had plans or they didn't have plans, we'd go through the process of, you know, we charge for tenders. And then um, a lot of the times in the early stages, they'd be shocked because it's the first time I was telling them was after I'd spent an hour with them and they'd be like, what? What did you ch charge? What? And, you know, that's another, when another, you know, sort of uh, thing switched was they don't, and they're not coming here knowing that they're gonna, I'm going to ask them for money for a tender. So then, from then, I went on the whole um, trying to educate them and preempt them that, you know, I will charge you for a tender, and this is the reasons why. So is this about, is about uh, educating them prior to you prior. meeting? Exactly yeah. right. So what, what did you do there? What so first of all, I had a bit of um, the early days started was just pretty much at the end of the conversation. I'd be like. I don't charge a tender. I hang up the phone. Just, you know, but then as my confidence grew, that's all it was. Once you grow your confidence, then, you, then, then you know, you begin the conversation with, okay, we're going to have a meeting, and at the end of the meeting, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to charge you this, and here's the reasons why. Then from there, I started to put it into a little bit of marketing material, a bit of PDF flyers, adding it to emails. Um, when people would ask me why, I'd tell them why, and I'd say, you know what? He's, um, uh, you know, attached to information about our company. He's a flyer in, into why we charge. So, you know, go to that sort of extent. Fantastic, man. And that's actually in your, in your workbook. On pages 45 to 52, there's a couple examples of educational content that you can use, swap and deploy to, to educate people. Yeah. Mm. But what's your favourite uh, say no story? So you obviously have people that you say no to. Have you got... <sighs> I mean... And how do you go about saying that? Well, first of all, I, I would like to say that the first, like, there's probably a lot of people here who haven't actually charged for quotes. And I remember the first time we actually got given money for a quote, it was like I'd won the job. It, it, was, it was absolutely amazing. But the one that you, you say no to is, is the one that you, um, you know, actually I've seen a, a guy in, in the gym and... Um, he was one of those guys that he wanted, he wanted to make sure that the full stop was in the right position and he wanted everything noted down of the inclusions. Anyways, he would refuse to pay for a quote. And, you know, um, that was it. I, we walked out. And I seen him about six months later in the gym and he came up to me and I said, oh, how's your things going with your build? He goes, oh, you know what, I, I, I don't know, nothing really. Like, so it just told me that he wasn't really looking. He wasn't that serious. And I was just like... Giving yourself the one, because when you say no to people, you're like, oh, fuck, did I just really lose someone here? But then you actually get that bit of thing like, well, it worked. Yeah. He wasn't really ready. No. I would have gone and wasted my time doing a bunch of nothing when yeah. he was just wasting time. So that was um, a real win. It, I hear that all the time. And, uh, Daniel Klinger up in Queensland just a week or two ago had a $2 million job where it was a standoff. The lady said, I'm not paying not paying for a quote, and he said, well, we charge. And she said, well, I'm walking. He said, okay, fine. And then the next day, one of his mates said, oh, that lady, well, you, she got to be so careful of her. Like, history of litigation and issues and, again, just hear it all the time. It's, so he was like, thank goodness. Um, so there's a reason for that. Some people, it's not even about the money. It could be 
Uh, you presenting that child's required solution reveals their true personality or the person. You, it's like a game of poker. You, you force them to show their cards. Yep. That's and what it does. Find out how serious they actually are. Exactly. A lot of time people just shop. Excellent, mate. People shop. So. Um, and just quickly, um, yep. last thing, your conversion rate from like sign quotes. So last time quotes. we came here, I mean, it, last time we were speaking too, I'd, I'd only lost one that um, paid for a tender. It's like in the 90s. Yeah, and um, now I've probably lost three, but one of those he decided not to go ahead with the project because of his investment numbers weren't stacking up. So, mm. you know, pretty, very, very high conversion rate. So when I first started, and I'm only in my second year, we started uh, late last year. So when it comes to the non charge of a quote, it's like 10%. It's like, it's just, it's stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. So you can't compare. Mate, thanks so much Beautiful. for sharing. Really no appreciate it, man. All good.